Namaste and welcome back to the video course on uh, watershed management. In module number 4 on watershed modeling today in lecture number 17, we will discuss numerical watershed modeling. So, some of the important topics covered in today's lecture include physically based watershed modeling, numerical modeling, finite difference method, finite time methods, then computer modeling. Uh, these are the topics covered and some of the important keywords in today's lecture include physically based watershed modeling, numerical modeling, finite difference methods, finite element methods. So, as we discussed in the last few lectures, so we have to go for modeling of the various processes taking place within a watershed and uh, these processes are very complex. So, most of the time we cannot go for any simplified models like analytical solutions or even field based uh, experimentation is very, very difficult. So, most of the time, so we have to go for computer based uh, modeling. So, that way uh, we have to say as we discussed in the last lecture, we have to formulate the problem, we have to conceptualize the model, then a mathematical model should be developed and the corresponding governing equations like sein Venance equations for overland flow or channel flow or other kinds of equations we have to solve. Uh, numerically, since uh, analytical solutions are only available for very simplified cases, so we have to solve these equations numerically using a computer, using a numerical technique uh, and then uh, apply the boundary conditions to get a solution. So, that we can identify the various processes and then we can get the uh, results. So, uh, why uh, this kinds of modeling is very important as far as watershed is concerned. So, as we discussed various processes like a transformation of rainfall into runoff over a watershed or generation of flow hydrograph at the outlet of the watershed. So, and then uh, say for example, use of the hydrograph at the upstream end and to route to the downstream end. Uh, then hydraulic simulations um, um, say in all these cases, uh, we need to simulate the, uh, the various processes using the corresponding mathematical equations or governing equations to calculate the uh, say like um, uh, runoff volume, peak runoff, time to peak etcetera. So, the advantage of uh, these kinds of numerical modeling or computer models uh, include, so these models allow parameter variations in space and time with the use of numerical methods. Since we cannot uh, solve these partial differential equations which we have discussed earlier uh, like a Venance equation in one dimension or two dimensions. So, that way we have to go for uh, computer models uh, using uh, say numerical methods. So, numerical methods uh, are used to approximate these partial differential equations and then um, uh, we apply the boundary condition to uh, get a solution. So, uh, say the main purpose is ease in simulation of complex rainfall pattern and then uh, say the by considering the various heterogeneity of the watershed. So, as we discussed the various uh, processes or various parameters within the watershed are very heterogeneous and it is varying from one point to another point. So, we have to consider all these aspects and then we have to uh, develop a uh, computer model uh, say for example, rainfall to runoff say for this uh, this figure shows say for the given rainfall at the outlet of the watershed we have to identify uh, say for the given rainfall how much will be the runoff. So, that uh, various watershed management measures can be undertaken. So, this is the um, main purpose of uh, this kinds of watershed uh, modeling. So, as we discussed uh, in the last few lectures, there are number of uh, types of models are available like um, black box model, lambda models, then um, distributed models etcetera. So, uh, as uh, say for example, now if you are looking to distributed models, so it is so co complex process since we have to solve the governing equations by using number of parameters. So, that way uh, say depending upon the, the objectives of the study and then uh, depending upon the data availability and expertise. So, we, we can go for such a uh, models. So, as uh, we discussed earlier say here I have shown the, the, the various types of hydraulic models, these uh, models we have already discussed earlier also. So, broadly uh, as uh, we have seen earlier say the model can be either lambda parameter models uh, like uh, cinder unit hydrograph, then distributed like kinematic wave, then or event based models like HEC C1 S or SWM or continuous simulations like uh, Stanford watershed model, uh, then uh, HSPF, then physically based model like HEC1 or SWM, then stochastic model like synthetic stream flows, 
then uh, in all this uh, many of the times we have to go for numerical techniques. So, it can be numerical or analytical. So, numerical like um, dynamic wave or diffusion wave or kinematic wave uh, or uh, say sometimes uh, say de depending upon the, the equations and uh, problems some uh, simplified uh, analytical solutions are available like instantaneous unit hydrograph or the analytical solution to kinematic wave as we uh, discussed earlier. So, that way uh, we, we will be looking for uh, numerical watershed modeling or computer based uh, models. So, uh, we have already seen earlier why such models are required. So, necessity of distributed models in good uh, as uh, we, we discussed the flow of water say for example, water as a resource flow of water in a watershed is a distributed process. So, rainfall is totally spread over the watershed uh, depending upon the conditions and then uh, from the rainfall to runoff uh, number of transformations uh, functions will be there and then the runoff is also distributed. So, that way uh, it is always uh, better to go for distributed modeling. So, even though uh, the, the black box models or the, the uh, uh, lambda models need uh, uh, say uh, very less data, the data requirement will be less and it is much easy to use. Uh, but those kinds of models cannot capture what is really happening within the watershed. Uh, since it is um, these models are not um, simulating the various hydrological processes what, what is happening just like in a, a physically based model. So, distributed models are required to identify how the runoff is uh, distributed or how the various processes are uh, taking place within the uh, watershed. So, that way we need uh, physically based uh, distributed models. So, generally uh, say physically based uh, distributed models um, are based upon the St. Vinan's equations or corresponding Navier-Stokes equations and uh, then uh, say uh, as I mentioned earlier. So, these equations we cannot uh, solve directly. So, we need uh, computer models, computer based models. So, we have to approximate these uh, governing equations of St. Vinan uh, by numerical techniques and then we have to solve using computer. Uh, then, uh, so uh, the computer models allow computation of flow rate and uh, water level as functions of space and time. Say, for example, if this is the watershed, then overland flow you can see here, and then this overland flow component is joining to the channel. So, channel flow is taking place. So, if you want to identify with respect to space and time uh, how the variation is taking place, uh, we have to uh, solve this St. Vinan's equation either in one dimension or two dimensions, and then we can identify uh, how the flow age, what is the water level and then time to peak, uh, then um, say peak discharge etcetera. So, these uh, models, so the advantage of distributed models, uh, these models are closely approximate the actual unsteady non-uniform nature of flow propagations in the, the overland and channels. So, that is the advantage of these models, but of course, uh, number of disadvantages like the model modeling is so cumbersome and uh, then we need uh, uh, large amount of data uh, to develop such models and then uh, expertise also required. So, that are some of the disadvantages, but then say to uh, uh, capture the entire hydrologic processes. Uh, taking place within the watershed, we have to go for the distributed uh, models or physically uh, based models. So, now uh, say uh, this physically based models, it, uh, we can classify them into either hydrologic or hydraulic um, models. So, the hydrologic or hydraulic models uh, say these are the conceptual or physically based procedures uh, numerically solving the hydrologic processes and then diagnose or forecast the processes. So, uh, the various uh, hydrologic processes we can uh, say uh, consider in this uh, starting from rainfall to uh, the evapotranspiration interception to infiltration and then runoff and then uh, we can uh, diagnose uh, the, the or the forecast the various processes. So, the models are called physically based since the description of natural system using uh, basic mathematical representation of flows, flows of uh, mass, momentum and various forms of energy. So, uh, here we call it as physically based model since uh, we are using the uh, laws of physics like conservation of mass, conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. Most of the time we will be using the continuity equation based upon the conservation of mass and then the equation of motion based upon the conservation of momentum and then uh, say we may use the simple Bernoulli's uh, theorem based upon the conservation of energy. 
So, uh, we consider these types of models as distributed since the, um, the spatial variation of variables and parameters are undertaken in the model. So, that is why uh, we call this kinds of models as distributed models. And then uh, as we discussed uh, in, in earlier lectures also uh, lar large number of applications are there for such um, uh, hydrologic or hydraulic mo modeling if, I mean the physically based or distributed modeling uh, like rainfall to runoff, then the surface water ground water assessments, then flood or drought predictions, then evaluation of watershed, then catchment management strategies, then uh, river basin or agricultural uh, water management etcetera. So, number of applications are there. So, to uh, get a uh, understanding of these various processes, uh, what is taking place in a watershed, we have to go for the, the physically based uh, distributed uh, models either hydrologic or hydraulic modeling uh, uh, say as far as the watershed is concerned by considering the, the particular uh, say uh, depending upon the objectives uh, we have to choose particular uh, the governing equations and then develop a mathematical model and then develop a computer model and solve for the various inputs uh, to get the uh, appropriate outputs and then we have to analyze for that. So, that way now uh, we have already discussed uh, say when we discussed about the, the physically based models. So, we have to systematically develop the model and then uh, we have to uh, do the modeling um, say uh, step by step in a by a step step by step procedure. So, here in this slides say for example, when we consider watershed based modeling say rainfall to runoff. So, here various steps I have identified in this slide say as I mentioned say uh, the, uh, the problem definition that means, if the objectives depending upon the objectives we can define the problem and then uh, uh, we can go for the solution. So, first step is uh, problem identification uh, with respect to the objectives set. Then uh, say uh, we have to conceptualize a model. So, this conceptualization is very important as I mentioned earlier also. Uh, so, the, the real uh, challenges to the engineer or scientist uh, is to conceptualize the model. So, the conceptualization include say identify the watershed area, then um, say whether we are going for one dimensional or two dimensional or three dimensional modeling and then uh, we have to identify what are the boundary conditions and uh, other various parameters which are uh, say uh, governing the, the system uh, and then also what kind of assumptions we have to utilize uh, depending upon the uh, problem. So, now once we conceptualize the, the model, then next step is uh, say uh, mathematical modeling. So, mathematical modeling means uh, we can identify the governing equations for that particular system uh, say whether it can be uh, say three dimensional fully, three dimensional form like uh, neighbor Stokes equations uh, or the uh, St. Venus equations or two dimensional or one dimensional form of these equations. And then uh, say for the given uh, say uh, domain uh, which we have already defined as the watershed, then we consider the appropriate initial and boundary conditions. So, once the all these are uh, defined, so then our mathematical uh, model is ready. So, now then the next step is uh, say, uh, so as I mentioned the mathematical model say uh, most of the time the we have to solve these complex partial differential equations, then uh, we, we do not have analytical solutions most of the time. So, we have to go for numerical uh, modeling. So, numerical modeling means we have to choose particular numerical techniques which can be appropriately used to, to solve uh, this partial differential equations like St. Venus equations. Uh, it can be like a finite difference scheme or a finite element method or boundary element methods like that and then uh, we choose that particular uh, technique or method and then we transform the governing equations uh, into that particular scheme uh, finite difference or finite term like that and then uh, we apply the boundary conditions and then uh, solve the system of equations. So, that way we will get the solution. So, that procedure once the numerical technique is chosen uh, uh, that uh, the development of the code and then uh, putting to computer model that is so called a computer modeling. So, for next step is computer model. Uh, so, most of the time uh, this computer models uh, we have to uh, say before applying to the 
particular pro problem of the watershed we have to verify and to see that uh, whether this model is working fine say especially if you are going to develop your own model mathematical model and uh, computer model uh, it is always uh, better to verify uh, with respect to some analytical or field observations and see that uh, the model is giving appropriate results. But uh, say uh, some, some uh, uh, standard models like mod flow or the watershed models or mic uh, 11 etcetera. So, those models um, may not need such kinds of verifications, but if you are developing your own models definitely uh, we have to go for model verification with respect to either available analytical uh, 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 solution or the field problems. Uh, then uh, once we do all these steps then uh, say we can identify whether the model developed is adequate for the particular problem to be solved. So, as I mentioned for uh, while developing watershed management plans we are doing this watershed modeling. So, uh, the model developed whether it is adequate uh, to deal with the particular objectives set so that we can verify. So, now uh, once the model is uh, we identify that the model is adequate then mod model can be constructed by considering the particular uh, say the data set of the, the, the watershed which you are considering. So, there we need the field data. So, field data like um, rainfall uh, pattern, rainfall intensity or the, the various um, uh, watershed parameters like size of the watershed, land use, then Manning's roughness coefficients, then um, the, the uh, saturated hydraulic conductivity etcetera. So, the field data is required to uh, construct the model. So, this model construction means the model which we have to construct for the particular watershed to deal with the particular objectives which we have set. So, that is the model construction here and then uh, once the model is constructed then um, we can run the model and see the performance of the model and then uh, say maybe for the particular watershed if some uh, field data is available uh, or field observations are available say for the given rainfall condition if some runoff measurements are available we can run the model and then see that whether we are getting the same results uh, same. So, that that way we can be very confident whether the model is giving appropriate results. So, that is that step is called the performance criteria of the model. Uh, then uh, say uh, with respect to the field uh, conditions uh, most of the uh, parameters like uh, hydraulic conductivity, porosity, uh, then uh, uh, say the um, uh, Manning's roughness coefficient etcetera. So, these parameters are varying drastically from one location to another location for the watershed. So, we have to go for a calibration and then validation process. So, this calibration and validation process we do with respect to the field data and then compare with respect to some of the observed data. So, that process is so called a calibration and validation. So, this is very important uh, for the particular watershed. So, once this is done uh, then uh, we can easily run the model for various scenarios. So, then the next step is model predictions. So, this model predictions means say for example, if you are going to construct a uh, say a dam or a check dam for a particular watershed at a particular location of the watershed. So, we have to identify say the annual average rainfall conditions, maximum rainfall condition, minimum rainfall conditions and then we have to say generate various scenarios whether how much water will be available, how much will be the storage possibilities, then uh, what kind of uh, the, 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 the storage is available for the given conditions. So, all these are so called uh, we can run the model and then we can uh, do the model predictions. So, then uh, the next step is we can do various analysis like sensitivity analysis. Uh, so, there various the variation say of the various parameters we can identify how the model will behave with respect to those parameter uh, extremes and then modeling parameters like time step and then grid size also uh, we can vary and then check. And then uh, finally, uh, say with respect to the various scenarios we are generated or with respect to the results uh, which we got. So, we have to also do a post audit analysis. I mean say if those kinds of events happens or we say with respect to the say after say uh, few months or after few season we have to see whether the model is giving appropriate results which we are looking for. So, that is so called a uh, post audit analysis. So, that way and now uh, we can develop the model say a distributed model numerical watershed model depending upon the objectives what kind of objectives you are setting and then um, for that say like as I mentioned rainfall to runoff or uh, development of a soil erosion model 
or say we are developing condominium transport model. So, like that say depending upon the objectives particular mathematical uh, model can be developed and then corresponding computer models can be developed using a numerical tool, numerical technique and then various processes as we discussed we can follow and then uh, we can go for a predictions mode for various scenarios. So, that is the way we develop physically distributed models uh, as far as a watershed is concerned. So, now coming back to physically based uh, distributed models say for example, if you are going for in fault runoff. So, depending upon the, the uh, objectives as I mentioned, uh, we may consider say for example, only some of the important uh, hydrologic process say for when uh, rainfall to run off uh, say then uh, in a uh, agriculture watershed for event based uh, modeling say for example, then uh, we do not have to worry the small quantity uh, process like uh, interception or um, uh, say uh, even uh, for event based modeling we can neglect the evapotranspiration. So, that way uh, the, uh, the important process like uh, the rainfall to run off uh, the, the overland flow channel flow components and then infiltration parameters we can consider. So, this is the conceptual model which we have developed at IIT Bombay. Uh, so, uh, by considering uh, the uh, overland flow, channel flow and the infiltration uh, modeling. So, here this is an event based model. So, that way we have neglected the, the even evapotranspiration aspects since the rainfall is for few hours and generally we will be simulating this kinds of uh, events after a few uh, rainfall seasons or few events of rainfall. So, that way uh, other parameters uh, other hydraulic process we can neglect. So, that way we can develop a typical uh, physically based uh, distributed uh, model. So, then uh, uh, now uh, based upon the discussion so far, now we will discuss uh, some more details about the numerical uh, modeling as far as watershed modeling is concerned. So, uh, as I mentioned when we deal with um, physically distributed model, so we have to either um, solve the governing equations such as Navier-Stokes equations or the simplified um, forms like St. Venance equations uh, in uh, uh, one dimensions, two dimensional, three dimensions and then uh, St. Venance equations also um, uh, considered uh, we have already seen it can be full form of the same mean and equations like a dynamic wave form or the approximated form like a diffusion wave form or the further approximated form like kinematic uh, wave form. So, now uh, we will see the Gavin equation which we have already discussed in the previous lecture also. So, the Gavin equations for overland flow modeling and then the uh, Gavin equations for channel flow modeling. So, this is as far as rainfall to uh, runoff prediction is concerned. So, here in the slides, uh, so uh, as I mentioned the same mean equation are uh, given uh, for one dimensional condition. So, the given equations are the continuity equations as given by this equation. So, del A by del T plus del V A by del X minus Q is equal to 0. Uh, so, where um, V is the velocity, Q is the, the, the inputs uh, like uh, rainfall, uh, excess rainfall coming to the, the watershed, then T is the time and A, A is the, the, the with respect to area of flow. And the, the moment equation uh, can be written, the, here is the moment equation. So, this is uh, del q by del t plus del v q by del x plus g n del y by del x minus s 0 plus s f is equal to 0, uh, where q is the discharge, uh, say g is the acceleration due to gravity, y is the depth of flow, s 0 is the bed slope, s f is the energy slope. So, as we discussed uh, say this is for overland flow uh, modeling. So, here you can see that uh, say here uh, say when we are discussing the only the this uh, say the, with the continuity equation when we are equating uh, the bed slope to energy slope then that kind of modeling is the model um, say is called kinematic wave. And when we are uh, considering only the continuity equation and then uh, this much part uh, I mean the uh, this portion of the Gavin equation then it is so called diffusion wave modeling. And then uh, as we discussed earlier if, uh, if it is only up to this part of the moment equation then we call it as quasi steady dynamic wave equation. Otherwise when we consider the entire equation we call such kinds of modeling as dynamic uh, wave model. So, then uh, with respect to this we have to uh, this Gavin equations we have to consider the 
initial and the boundary conditions. So, initial conditions are required since we are going for time dependent modeling or transient modeling. So, the initial conditions can be for the beginning at the beginning of the time step t is equal to 0, whether depth of flow or the discharge can be either can be taken as 0 or if the values are known uh, that those values can be taken. And then uh, boundary conditions are considered uh, uh, say, uh, say here say for example, if this is our watershed. So, at the on the ridges of the watershed uh, uh, throughout the uh, simulation we can consider uh, all the time h is equal to 0, uh, head is equal to 0 and um, the discharge per unit width also 0 uh, on the ridges. And then uh, at the outlet if the some values are known for either head or death, uh, the discharge. Uh, or de depth of flow discharge, we can consider those values. So, now uh, this constitute this governing equations, initial conditions and boundary conditions and uh, say when the system is defined like the, 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 the boundary of the uh, watershed is defined. So, now our mathematical model is complete as far as overland flow is concerned for this particular watershed. So, that way uh, for the given watershed, once it is conceptualized, now the mathematical model is ready. So, next question is how to solve these governing equations. So, we will be discussing about the uh, numerical uh, techniques. Then uh, say the other component is the channel flow. So, here in this slide you can see the governing equation, this also we have discussed in the last lecture. So, channel flow is concerned. So, as far as the, the watershed is concerned, we separate into overland flow and the channel flow. So, this is the overland and this is the channel. Uh, so, here for channel flow, the various overland flow components will be joining to the channel and then we have to route the flow uh, through the channel. So, here again uh, say if we consider say for example, the same convenience equations in one dimensions. So, most of the time the channel flow one dimensional modeling is sufficient. So, the equation of continuity as given by this equation uh, del q by del x plus del a by del t minus small q is equal to 0. So, here uh, we can see that this q is the discharge at uh, any location of the watershed, t is the time, a is the flow so cross section. Uh, cross sectional flow and the small q is the overland flow components joining at various locations of the uh, channel. Then the moment equation is again del q by del t by del by del x of q square by a is equal to g a into s 0 minus s f minus g a into del h by del x. So, as I mentioned this equation uh, various forms uh, are available in the literature. So, one particular form is like this. So, here uh, s 0 is the bed slope of the channel, s f is the energy slope which we can obtain through the uh, mining equation as given here. And then corresponding uh, the approximations like diffusion wave form uh, as we discussed in the previous slide also uh, by giving given by these two equation equation of continuity and equation of momentum and the kinematic wave form the continuity equation and the, the uh, energy slope is equal to bed slope. So, these three forms either one or the typical form we can solve uh, for the uh, given watershed and then uh, say for the given channel condition of the water channel of the watershed. So, then we supplement with the uh, initial conditions for the uh, given channel. So, initial condition can be if the depth of flow discharge for, for the watershed is known uh, from the inlet or with respect to outlet. So, so, for the initial time, so that is the in initial condition and boundary condition is concerned if the if there is some uh, flow is coming from the out the inlet of the watershed, I mean if a st stream is continuing that can be our uh, boundary condition or we can consider the depth of flow and um, the, the discharge at the beginning of the um, stream as 0 depending upon the condition. Say here say for example, this location and then uh, say the boundary condition also can be applied maybe at the outlet. So, now as far as channel flow modeling is concerned, the governing equations are defined, uh, then uh, the, the various forms of governing equations like the same Venance equation, dynamic wave form, diffusion wave form, then uh, the kinematic wave form, one of the form we can utilize and then uh, the boundary conditions and the initial conditions are defined. So, our mathematical model is ready. So, now when we are going for total watershed modeling of course, we cannot separate the overland flow component and channel flow component. So, we have to couple the overland flow component and the channel flow component together. Uh, so, that uh, we will have a coupled model uh, for overland and channel flow. So, uh, once both the models are coupled 
so once both models are approximated, uh, governing equations are approximated using particular numerical technique and then we can couple together uh, so that uh, we have a complete model. And then of course, various processes like um, uh, infiltration uh, we can model through Philips um, models or um, Green Arms model or various other models and then evapotranspiration if you are considering we can model using uh, Penman method or any other method. So, like that various hydrologic process also can be combined within the, the um, distributed model which we are considering. So, that way now uh, our um, um, the, the definition of the mathematical model is ready as far as the uh, considered watershed. So, now once the mathematical is model is ready for the considered watershed. Now, next question is how to solve this uh, governing equation. So, we have already seen uh, these governing equations are partial differential equations uh, and then it is uh, uh, most of the time nonlinear type equations. So, that way uh, we have to go for numerical techniques. So, here I have dis mentioned about the solution methodologies. So, solution methodologies generally available solution methodologies include uh, analytical methods, um, uh, physical method and computational method. Method. So, analytical method for the given mathematical formulation, an analytical expression involving the parameters and the independent variables are obtained using various mathematical uh, procedures. So, it can be either integration or uh, integration by parts and then various schemes we can adopt. Uh, but uh, it is obviously a uh, lot of since depending upon the governing equations, um, it is uh, it is complex pro process to develop such analytical solutions. And then uh, say this uh, these kinds of developed analytical solutions are only applicable for very simplified problems. So main limitations only for a small class of uh, mathematical formulations uh, with the simplified uh, governing equations, boundary conditions, and geometry. So anal analytical solutions can be obtained. So that that way for most of the field problems we cannot apply the analytical uh, solution. So, once if you are developing a computer model or a numerical model then we can verify your numerical model using uh, such analytical solution. So, that is the advantages of these analytical solutions. So, then the second method is physical method. So, physical method means this is not a uh, computer based model or other kinds of model physical means physically we are developing a scaled model or we are developing a uh, uh, say we are uh, doing it in the field. So, physical method is the as the uh, mathematical model represents a real physical system all the certain idealized assumptions and variables and parameters of the model can be considered as having. Uh, physical dimensions and can be analyzed sometimes in the laboratory or in the field itself. So, this is possible, but uh, when we consider the complexities of a watershed, so the, the watershed itself is so complex by considering various processes or various parameters. So, that way this uh, physical models are uh, used uh, uh, very uh, say in a very limited way uh, say to develop such a by considering all these complexities in a lab it is very very tedious job and even to go to the field and uh, say while various hydrologic process like rainfall happening then to uh, measure and then identify the various uh, parameters are very difficult. So, that way the physical models are used less frequently since it is expensive cumbersome and difficult in practice. Then uh, the next uh, say our uh, next uh, methodology is computational uh, modeling or computer modeling. Uh, so, that is what we generally use as far as the uh, the solutions of this kinds of equations and watershed modeling is concerned. So, in computational method uh, the solution is obtained with the help of uh, some approximate methods uh, such as numerical techniques using a computer. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, commonly numerical methods are used to obtain the solution in the computational method. Uh, so, uh, depending upon the governing equations, depending upon the boundary conditions, we can uh, use particular type of um, numerical uh, uh, technique. So, wider class of mathematical formulations and uh, advent of fast computers, computational models have become the most widely used uh, valuable tool for solving the engineering problems. So, we can see that uh, the la last 50 years, 5 decades, uh, a large number of numerical techniques have been developed 
and uh, these are all these were all possible due to the advancement in the computer technology. So, actually the first uh, numerical method was final difference method, then final term method came, then boundary element method came and now uh, nowadays we are uh, say uh, developing mesh free methods. So, that way the developments have taken place for the last uh, 50 years and these are these were only possible due to the advancement in the uh, computers computers and the development of fast uh, computers so a uh, variety of numerical methods are available uh, as i mentioned so depending upon the governing equations depending upon the problem uh, we can choose particular numerical uh, technique for the solutions of the governing equations. So, this can be either for one dimensional problem, two dimensional problems or three dimensional problems. So, some of the important numerical uh, methods I have listed here uh, like uh, method of characteristics, finite difference methods, finite volume methods, finite element methods, boundary element methods and now latest addition is mesh free methods. So, these are some of the important uh, numerical methods available for the solutions of these uh, types of partial differential equations such as sin valence equations either one dimension, two dimensions or three dimensions. So, now uh, we will briefly discuss these numerical uh, tools and then uh, most of the time we use either final difference method or final tunnel method. So, we will uh, discuss uh, some somewhat details about these two techniques of final difference method and final tunnel methods. Uh, so, let us have a brief look into uh, these numerical tools uh, which we can utilize as far as uh, the solutions of St. Venance equations or Navier Stokes equations for the watershed modeling. So, first one is the uh, final difference uh, method. So, here uh, say what we do the final difference method is concerned the continuous variation of function concerned by a set of values at points on a grid of intersecting lines. So, if this is the our uh, uh, domain, so we discretize this domain into uh, rectangular or square grids like this and then uh, say we use the governing equations uh, so that um, we discretize the governing equations. So, you can see that if say if you consider a, a domain like this then what we do we can uh, discretize the domain using the, the uh, grids rectangular or square uh, grids like this and then uh, we can uh, say uh, we will consider the governing equations. So, here if this is uh, x, so for two dimensional modeling, so x y, so this is delta x, this is uh, delta y. So, that way uh, we will do a discretization and then the gradient of the function are then represented by uh, differences in the values at neighboring points and a final difference version of the equation is formed. So, we can see that in our governing equations like we are having the term like uh, del h by del x. So, this we can represent as, as del x del delta h by delta x. So, this again we can represent as uh, h i minus h i minus 1 divided by uh, delta x. So, this is say for example, if this is i, this is i minus 1. So, its difference is taken. So, uh, that is as far as the, the derivative uh, say first order derivative uh, uh, say in spatial wise. So, similarly, uh, time wise also say for example, del h by del t we can write as delta h by delta t. So, there again uh, we can write uh, say we can have um, uh, the variation with respect to the time domain. So, here again uh, you can have this is x, this is t. So, we can consider the variations uh, with respect to the uh, x t plane. So, that is x x, x plane give the the variation in space and this t represent the time. So, this will be now delta t and uh, this will be uh, delta x. So, that way we can consider. So, we can then represent delta h by delta t with respect to uh, uh, say if we consider this as uh, j and this as j plus 1. So, we can write with respect to h j plus 1 minus h j divided by delta t. So, this details uh, we will discuss further. So, 
Finally, at the points in the interior of the grid, this equation is used to form a set of simultaneous equations giving the value of the function at a point in terms of values at nearby points. So, you can see that nearby points once we consider this particular point, the nearby points with respect to nearby points, we can use various schemes like backward, forward or central different schemes. So, that finally, we can form a system of equations. At the edges of the grid, the values of the function is fixed or a special form of final difference equation is used to give the required gradient of the function. Say for example, if this this is a free surface uh, which we consider. So, in final difference this is one of the disadvantage we have to consider like this, but then we use certain spe, uh, special type of approximations to deal this kinds of irregular domain. So, that is about the uh, final difference method. So, then another important uh, say method which we use in uh, water resource is so called method of characteristics. So, method of characteristics is also one variant of fi final difference uh, method. So, here uh, the method of characteristics here in this slide you can see the details are given. Uh, MOC reduces a partial differential equation to a family of ordinary differential equations along which the solution can be integrated from uh, some initial data given on a suitable uh, hyper uh, surface. Uh, say for example, uh, this is an x t plane, then uh, we can consider we will do some transformation. So, and then we will be having a c plus or c minus characteristic uh, lines or characteristic curve and with respect to that the the approximation will be done. So, for a for example, for a first order partial differential equation uh, m, the method of characteristic discovers, discovers curves so called characteristic curve or characteristics along which partial differential equations become an ordinary differential equations. So, we do certain transformations and then accordingly we do. So, then it is solved along the characteristics uh, curves and transformed into a solution of the uh, solution for original partial differential equations. So, the first step is we transform the partial differential equation to ordinary differential equation uh, by defining the characteristics and then uh, uh, we solve through the characteristics this uh, the governing the transformed governing equations. So, as you can see this is also a variant of final difference scheme suitable for solving especially for hyperbolic equations. So, I am due to lack of time I am not going to the entire details of this method of characteristics. So, MOC uh, is used to simulate like it is very uh, useful to simulate advection uh, dominated transports and uh, then also it can be used to track idealized particles uh, through the flow fields and this is this method is efficient and minimize numerical instabilities. So, that is about the method of characteristics. Then the next uh, numerical true method is so called uh, finite element method. So, this is one of the uh, most and widely used uh, finite element methods. So, here uh, compared to finite difference methods. So, here the region of interest is divided in much uh, much more uh, flexible way. Say, say for example, same earth and dam which we have seen in the previous slide for final difference scheme. So, here instead of uh, rectangular grid or square grid, we can use uh, triangle elements like this. So, that we can represent the variation uh, the regular boundary uh, very easily. Uh, so, the nodes at which the values of the function is found to um, found how to lie on a grid system or a flexible mesh. So, this uh, junction is so called node and this is so called uh, elements. So, the boundary conditions are uh, handled in a more convenient manner. So, that is the advantage of the finite element methods. So, here various schemes like a direct approach, variation principle or weighted residual approach uh, are available as far as the finite element method is concerned. So, now say for example, the say if you consider a rectangular domain like this. So, or irregular domain also it is much easier to deal with finite element method. So, here what we can do say we can use um, uh, say triangle elements or rectangle elements or combinations of these elements and then uh, this is so called triangle elements in 2D. Uh, so, this is so called uh, rectangle or square element in in 2D. So, here you can see that for a triangle element there will be 3 nodes. So, these are called uh, nodes and for rectangle elements 4 nodes 
uh, when we consider the linear variations. So, like that uh, various schemes either of uh, 2 D uh, or uh, 1 D one dimension is concerned we can consider linear line element like this. So, the variation will be we can consider uh, linearly varying like this. So, uh, that is uh, so linear variation for one dimension. So, this is for two dimensions and then also uh, three, three dimension like prisms uh, triangular prisms or rectangular prisms. Uh, like that we can uh, consider uh, as far as 3 D is concerned. So, various elements various schemes are available in a much uh, more flexible way uh, as far as finite tunnel method is concerned. So, the method is much more flexible and uh, very easy to deal uh, compared to finite different schemes, but of course, mathematically it is not so easy we have to there are number of transformation process to be considered. So, but, but due to the, the, the flexibility now finite tunnel method is the most pop, popularly or most widely used uh, numerical tool in the solution of various problems not only in, uh, in civil engineering, but uh, mechanical aerospace or the even bioengineering. So, now the third method the next method which I would like to di briefly discuss here is so called boundary element method. So, this is a further development uh, with respect to finite element method. So, here uh, we first uh, discretize only the boundary like this. So, this is the domain. So, we consider the elements like this and then we initially discretize the boundary and then we consider the internal nodes. So, actually uh, the partial differential equations describing the domain is transformed into an integral equation relating only to boundary values. So, the method is based upon Green's integral theorem and the boundary is discretized instead of the total domain. Uh, so, you can see that this is the boundary. So, first we discretize the boundary and then to identify various values on the, uh, the internal domain. So, we consider various nodes at various locations. So, that way a three dimensional problem reduces to a two dimensional problem and a two dimensional problem will be reduced to a one dimensional problem only computationally. The problem is of course, the same dimension, but computationally a three dimensional problem become two dimensional and a two dimensional problem become one dimension. So, this boundary element method is ideally suited to the solution of many two and three dimensional problems in elasticity and potential theory, uh, but as far as watershed modeling is concerned due to the various complexities we rarely use the boundary element method. So, watershed modeling either we can go for finite difference method or the finite element method. So, that way we will discuss further uh, more aspects of these two methods uh, in this lecture. So, now coming back to the watershed modeling. So, say for example, if we consider the kinematic wave form of the St. Venance equations. So, as I mentioned, so we can either go for the analytical solution. So, uh, here the analytical solution for one dimensional case uh, I have given as given by uh, Jaber and Mokhtar as published in Advanced in Water Resource uh, in 2003. So, an analytical solution uh, for one dimensional kinematic wave equation uh, can be derived, but this is only suitable for very simplified problem rectangular domains uh, with uh, very simple boundary conditions. So, here this q it can be used to identify the flow variation and then T c is the time of concentration and T r is the rainfall duration and T f is the simulation time and L w is the length of watershed in the direction of main slope. So, other than this uh, very simplified uh, form of the, uh, the analytical solutions which we have seen. Now, um, uh, no other analytical solutions are available for field applications as far as watershed modeling is concerned. So, that way we have to go for numerical modeling like a uh, finite different scheme or fi finite element scheme. So, now let us see some more aspects about these two techniques finite difference methods and the uh, finite element uh, method. So, as I mentioned already in finite difference methods the calculations are performed on a grid uh, placed over the and the uh, domain. So, if it is uh, one dimensions it can be x t plane or in two dimension it can be x y t plane or in three dimension it can be x y z and t plane. So, this is uh, say for example, in one dimension x plane and t. So, flow and water surface elevation are obtained for incremental time and distances along the channel. So, if you consider channel model we can do overland and channel also. So, if you consider channel, so with respect to x and with respect to time uh, and, uh, the space and time we can do the modeling. So, this final different scheme is concerned uh, generally we can have two types of schemes one is so called explicit method and second one is so called implicit 
method. So, in the explicit methods we calculate the uh, values of uh, velocity and the depth over the over a grid system based on a previously known uh, data for the uh, river or channel reach which we consider. So, that way from one step to another step we are directly calculating uh, the values either flow depth or discharge uh, so the, or velocity. So, that is why it is called a explicit method and in the implicit method uh, uh, we set a we set up a series of uh, simultaneous numerical equations over a grid system for the entire uh, stream or river and equations are solved at a uh, at each time step. So, that way the methodology will be stable and you will get a better solution. So, that is so called a implicit method. So, in final difference method we can typically follow a step by step procedure. So, uh, for the given governing partially function equations uh, the uh, say and boundary conditions we can divide the domain into grids as shown here and then put the at nodal junctions at grid um, uh, say these junctions we can identify various uh, values like um, i minus 1 j or i j this uh, we can write, write 1 2 in horizontal the rows wise and 1 to n uh, the column wise also. Then uh, next is transformation by final difference method as I mentioned uh, uh, either first order or second order partial differential terms can be transformed and then finally, we can system uh, form a system of uh, difference equations uh, for the total uh, grid points which we consider and then we can apply the boundary conditions and then we can uh, solve either by direct or iterative schemes by applying the boundary conditions. So, we get the solutions. So, as far as the final different scheme is concerned uh, generally three uh, schemes uh, are available uh, which are commonly used the first one is called uh, backward difference. So, backward difference means say for example, if we consider del h by del x. So, here we consider the node in the backward direction of the node at which gradient is sought. So, here h i minus h i minus 1 divided by delta x. So, similarly, we can have forward difference scheme. So, we consider the forward direction of the node at which the gradient is sought. So, h i plus 1 minus h i by h i by delta x and then we can have central difference scheme. So, we consider uh, the the a central scheme like h i plus half minus h i minus half divided by delta x. So, uh, one of the scheme we can utilize as far as the finite difference modeling is uh, concerned. So, now so for example, if you are using the final difference uh, scheme while doing a river or channel modeling. So, here we have one dimension model uh, in x, x direction and that t is the time. So, you can see that we can discretize like this with respect to spatial uh, x direction and uh, time and then uh, say correspondingly we can identify various terms like uh, depth of flow or discharge uh, um, uh, say that particular grid points uh, like this. So, this shows a typical final difference scheme which is applicable for the, uh, the uh, channel flow modeling using the final difference approximation. So, as we have seen the final difference is concerned we can have explicit scheme and implicit scheme. So, in the explicit scheme the temporal derivative is uh, mentioned like this and the special derivative is mentioned by this equation. And so, from one time step to another time step we use the previous values and uh, march forward. But in the case of implicit scheme uh, we write with respect to all the grid points uh, the governing equations is uh, the terms of various terms are written like this and then uh, we use a weighting factor where theta is a weighting factor varying from 0 to 1 and then uh, we can put uh, say for example, when theta is 0.5 it is called the crank nicholson scheme semi implicit scheme when theta is equal to uh, say uh, 0 then uh, we will be having uh, say fully explicit or fully implicit scheme when theta is equal to 1 um, we can have either 1 or 0 we can have explicit or implicit scheme. So, that is the difference between explicit and implicit final difference scheme. So, then uh, uh, the next method I would like to discuss briefly is so called uh, final tournament method. So, here we again use the kinematic and diffusion wave forms of, of our line flow to de demonstrate the finite element scheme. So, we have already seen the governing equations as far as the 
uh, kinematic wave scheme is concerned. Uh, so, the, the uh, uh, continuity equation and the, uh, uh, the moment equation, moment equation kinematic wave form is S0 is equal to SF. So, the continuity equation uh, we can use uh, scheme like Galerkin finite element method in one dimension. So, we can use linear line elements. So, first we use a shape function here n is a shape function or interpolation function and then uh, multiply by that the Gavani equation and then integrate over the domain and then equate to 0 and uh, we um, use the Galerkin scheme uh, here and then uh, we can integrate and then transform the equation as in equation number 2. Uh, this shows the expanded form of this equation. So, then uh, here the shape function with different types of shape function we can use. So, some of the shape function like um, uh, linear line elements uh, which is based upon polynomial. So, this is one n 1 is 1 minus x by L or n, n 2 or n j is x by L and then uh, we can discretize the given equation for one element and then uh, we can uh, the discretized form for the given element is shown here for the continuity equation in the kinematic wave form and the corresponding various terms are given here. And then finally, we can assemble uh, so say one by considering all the elements line elements uh, and then time is concerned here this model was developed in IIT Bombay by one of my PhD student. So, he used the implicit final difference scheme uh, as we mentioned here. So, the final system of uh, uh, equation is uh, given here and then uh, say after rearranging the term we will get a final uh, system like this. So, here if you are using the uh, say, say in Krang Nicholson scheme here omega will be 0 0.5 and in this scheme we apply the boundary conditions and initial conditions and then we can solve the system of equations. So, we can find the unknowns like um, depth of flow or velocity or discharge at given uh, location uh, by so solving the system of equations uh, in the final time method. So, here the overland flow um, final time formation I have demonstrated. So, very similar way we can uh, go for the channel flow also. Uh, so, using um, uh, this channel flow formulation and overland flow formulation both we can combine together or couple together uh, so that we can identify how the flow variations and uh, depth of flow or various parameters can be identified and the system of equation can be either solved um, directly or uh, using iterative techniques. So, here uh, say for example, if this is a typical watershed then this is a channel. So, here one dimensional model we use consider the strips like this. So, this is the discretization using the final tunnel method and this is the channel discretization. So, that way we can solve this uh, system of equations. Uh, so, these details we can see some of our publications uh, uh, ready and others in, uh, published in 2007 in hydrologic process and then water resource management uh, etcetera. These formulations are available in the journal publications which you can uh, refer. So, this uh, ready I, my, my student has say developed a model by considering the flow chart is given here say for example, for overland flow. So, with input uh, data uh, and then various uh, hydrologic process like interception, infiltration we consider then uh, uh, we generate the element matrix uh, using final term Galerkin final term method. Then we generate the global matrix by assembling the element matrices and apply the boundary conditions and we continue the modeling. Uh, until the time step the entire time period is considered. So, this shows the typical flow chart say for example, for overland flow using uh, final tunnel method. So, before closing uh, today's lecture we will briefly discuss uh, one case study which was done by uh, my student Wengal Reddy. So, here uh, the watershed which we consider is so called Harsul watershed. So, this is also for uh, rainfall to runoff modeling using the finite element approach uh, the using the uh, diffusion wave and kinematic wave approach. So, the watershed is located in Nasik district Maharashtra state area is about 10 point 929 square kilometer. So, this is the watershed area, uh, this is the boundary and this is the outlet of the watershed and the major soil class is gravelly loam and here we use the remote sensing uh, data uh, given by IRS um, and 
1 D and then also the thematic maps like digital elevation model, slope map, land use land cover uh, were developed using ArcGIS uh, software. So, these details we will be discussing um, in a later lecture when we discuss the geography information system and remote sensing applications as far as the watershed uh, modeling is concerned. So, here for this uh, typical watershed uh, we consider overland flow elements of 144 as shown here and overland uh, flow nodes of 188 channel flow elements. So, this is the channel. So, channel flow elements of 22 are used with uh, element length of 0.25 kilometer and average bed width is considered as 18 meter and uh, then the overland flow slope and channel slope are also considered and then uh, with respect to the land use land pattern we identified the, the uh, Manning's reference coefficient and then uh, put into the particular uh, 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 the strip or uh, the element or nodal wise which we consider. And then uh, as I mentioned uh, we developed the scheme and then we solved the system of equation to uh, identify for a given rainfall condition how the runoff will be taking place uh, at any location of the watershed. So, here uh, some results I am presenting uh, say this is based upon the diffusion wave model run by done by Wenger Reddy and uh, the infiltration model is green amped model. Uh, so, uh, he used um, 3 rainfall events uh, for calibration and 2 rainfall events for validations. Uh, so, here the, uh, the, the event data are given here and uh, as far as infiltration parameters like saturated hydraulic conductivity, suction head, saturated water content, uh, initial water content uh, were identified by uh, using standard values available values and then calibrating with respect to the observed results. So, this shows at the outlet of the watershed the for the calibrated events, 3 calibrated events and 2 validated events the with respect to the rainfall pattern which is shown with respect to rainfall intensity in millimeter per hour how the discharge is varying uh, at the outlet of the watershed. And then these results were compared with respect to the observed data also. So, uh, you can see that uh, in the distributed model we may not get the correct fit the correct the, the accuracy of the model depends upon the accuracy of the data and then we need a huge uh, data for such modeling. So, um, of course, modeling is quite complex. Uh, we have to get all this uh, if you get complete data in an accurate way of course, the model results will be also uh, better. So, these are some of the references used for today's lecture as I mentioned this paper gives the model which we finite element model which we discussed today. Then before closing the lecture some uh, tutorial assignments and self evaluation questions. So, for the tutorial question is illustrate the necessity of physically based uh, watershed modeling and develop a conceptual model for a typical watershed for physically based modeling describe the merits and demerits of physical modeling. So, based upon today's lecture you can answer this question. Then some eva self evaluation questions like why distributed modeling required for watershed modeling illustrates various solution methodologies for problem solution, differentiate between explicit and implicit finite difference schemes, describe finite element solution methodology with the salient features. So, these questions you can easily answer based upon today's lecture. Then few assignment questions uh, like with the help of flowchart illustrate hydrologic and hydraulic modeling, then describe finite difference method solution methodology with salient features, then differentiate between final difference method and method of characteristics and describe boundary element method solution methodology with the salient features. So, these details you can answer these problems you can answer based upon today's lecture. So, finally, an unsolved problem study the salient features and problems of your watershed area identify how various uh, physically based models can be used for various problem solutions such as rainfall runoff, flooding, drought management rainwater harvesting schemes, soil erosion etcetera. So, you can study your watershed in detail and then you can come up with uh, the uh, physically based model which you can develop appropriately for your watershed. So, with uh, this um, today's lecture on physical model uh, numerical watershed modeling is over. So, in the le next lecture we will be discussing the groundwater uh, and subsurface uh, flow as far as watershed modeling is concerned. Uh, the details will be discussed uh, in the uh, next lecture. Thank you.